You're here with the Coffee League, found at thecoffeeleague.com. Follow us at the Coffee League on Instagram. We talk about everything and all things coffee. Uh, I am currently in uh, Sweden, uh, a great country for many reasons, uh, and one of those reasons is coffee. I think uh, uh, much of light roast coffee, the third co- wave in coffee, specialty coffee, uh, if not got its start, uh, certainly has been very inspired by what's uh, been going on in the Nordic countries. And uh, I was in Stockholm recently, and I met uh, a number of baristas. And one of the baristas I mentioned is my guest today, Vincent Caroni. Uh, he is both with Drop Coffee and with uh, Johan Nistrom. Pronounce that correctly, Johan. Yeah, pretty much. Johan and Nistrom. Johan and Nistrom. And yeah. uh, <laughs> unquestionably, they are two of the top uh, cafes in all of uh, Scandinavia. I'd say they're right up there, world class, anywhere in the world they can match up, both of those places. And uh, Vincent, uh, you're getting a tremendous experience working for both of them. And uh, a matter <laughs> of fact, uh, if uh, on my podcast here, Joanna Am, who is the founder and head roaster at uh, Drop Coffee, I've had on the show. And uh, Vincent, I should say, has also competed as a, in barista competitions and finished third uh, as, uh, against all baristas in, in Sweden recently. So congratulations on that. Thank you so very Thank much you. for taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you. It's my pleasure. So Vincent, tell us about your journey to coffee. Uh, where were you from originally and uh, what, how did you first get introduced uh, to coffee? Um, I was uh, born here in uh, Stockholm, uh, raised here as well, uh, so lived here my entire life. Uh, and I got into specialty coffee about, uh, must be four years ago now, mm-hmm. uh, where I had a, a small internship with my school mm-hmm. um, at the uh, huge chain Espresso House, almost like uh, Starbucks, but in right. Sweden. Right. Uh, yeah, so uh, I, I had an internship there, uh, and it really opened my eyes for coffee. Uh, and from there on, I just started learning stuff uh, by myself from the internet, watching YouTube videos. Well, well let, uh, let's go there. But so, uh, uh, again, for those people that are, are, have not spent time in, in Sweden, uh, Espresso House is uh, quite a large chain. There's uh, dozens upon dozens of them throughout Sweden, and they're like Starbucks. Uh, they, they, they are... Uh, what you would call, I, I would call second wave coffee. They're, they're um, uh, very fine places, but not to that level of uh, a drop coffee or a Johan Nistrom uh, 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 or uh, many of the other top, top uh, coffee collective, uh, Tim Windowo. Uh These are on, on another level. So when you were there working at, at uh, Espresso House, what type of coffee you, were you drinking? And at what point did you get interested in the more um uh the the higher echelons of the of 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 coffee uh production yeah uh, well espresso house is a really interesting chain and they have a really interesting mm-hmm. concept because they use specialty coffee but like brew it as if it was not mm-hmm. uh like they use they have like huge lattes and stuff like that so uh, when I just had their brewed filter coffee, uh, I was really amazed because it was this uh, fruity coffee from Ethiopia. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember it like it was yesterday. But yeah, I was really shocked by that cup of coffee um, and started asking questions to the uh, more experienced baristas there. Now, uh, now when, when you had coffee. that uh, cup of brewed coffee, how? Uh, so you had that coffee, just straight coffee, that, that is espresso, yeah. that coffee. How, how was it brewed when you had it? Uh, that was just brewed with a with a regular coffee brewer, okay. uh, a bun. Yeah. Okay. And so then you had it. You had that experience. Then where did you go with that? Then did you seek out another job? Did you uh, uh, start experimenting and drinking different types of coffee? Where Where did it go from there? Uh, I started experimenting. Uh, I looked. I searched the internet for specialty coffee. Uh, went to a lot of different places around Stockholm, just trying to get more and more coffee uh, and learning more and more, just talking with the baristas working uh, behind the bar uh, and everything. 
so yeah, and then I, I actually worked there for like another year or so, mm-hmm. uh, and actually tried to get my colleagues to get like the same knowledge about coffee that I was getting from everyone that I was talking to. Mm-hmm. So I, I always came back with like, hey, I heard this yesterday, mm-hmm. uh, and talked to my colleagues there. What, was there anybody in particular <clears throat> that you met there or at other cafes, <clears throat> or even that you were introduced to on YouTube? that had a particular, uh, that inspired you or had an effect on your pursuit of coffee or knowledge of coffee? Uh, Yes, it was actually. Uh, An old colleague of mine, uh, he's called Andy. Mm -hmm. Uh, He worked at uh, John and Eastram. And I started talking to him and we got a really good connection. Uh, So I just came there more often uh, and became a regular. uh, And he made a huge impact on my coffee journey. Fantastic. And then uh, how did your own personal coffee consumption habits change during that time? Uh, well, I, I started to be more aware of uh, origin, uh, as you normally would when mm-hmm. you have no idea, and then suddenly learn all at the same time. Uh, right. So, you, yeah, I got really nerdy uh, and just was always looking for a better cup of coffee. Uh, a coffee that was more interesting and new to me. But were you drinking pour overs? Were you drinking espresso? <clears throat> were you? Uh, did you go from drinking coffee with milk and sugar to drinking coffee straight? Did you go for the lighter roast? What? What? How, how uh, have your tastes evolved over time? Uh, before I learned uh, anything, I had dark roast coffee with milk. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that was the go to. Right. Uh, and um, yeah, so I started drinking more and more pour overs uh, mm-hmm. and aeropresses. Uh, in the beginning, not so much espressos, uh, but later on that came as well. Nice. So and, and... I would say now, now it's pretty even between good coffee and uh, espressos. How many coffees do you have a day? Ooh, probably uh, depends on if I'm working or not. But if I'm not working, maybe five. Okay. Five, six, and if I am about ten. Okay, so you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm three or four, but there are days when I visit many cafes that I'll go up from there. But everybody's different, and, and it's whatever works for you. But uh, yeah, uh, the, the main thing is enjoying every cup. Now, uh, when when uh, what was the first? So after you left Espresso House, uh, where was the first specialty coffee shop you took a job at? Uh, that was actually Joanna Nistram. Uh, I got okay. offered a job there because I was uh, a regular uh, and I was very interested. Uh, what's so it? I was offered a job. What's so their training program like for baristas? How do they train baristas there? Uh, we have uh, a, a really good education, actually. Um, mm-hmm. It's very, for me, because I was so nerdy, it wasn't that much new in in the theory. Uh of the like basic stuff about how from plant to cup uh, and that stuff. But uh, I learned a lot about brewing and extraction, uh, also a bit about roasting, but not that much. But, but do they have a specific program they put you through over a week or a month or however many days? What's that like? Uh, yeah, they, oh, they changed it recently. So I'm not exactly <laughs> sure, but first it started off with a lot of t- theory, uh, I think about a week or something, and then some practical education as well. Right. Okay, so you're one of the <clears throat> people that, the only one I know, that's working for both Drop Coffee and Johan and <laughs> and, and, and like I mentioned before, and this is no exaggeration, these are two absolute world-class cafes. Yeah. And Joanna Am, um, who owns Drop, she's uh, always finishes in the top three, four in the world in the World Roasting Championships, but both places highest quality you can imagine in specialty coffee that could stand up to anyone. Uh, how, how is it that you're working for both places? Is it a competition between the two? And, and uh, are the, what's, what's similar and what's different about both places? Um, well, there, there's not a competition, uh, actually. It's more of like a really close community like the coffee shops are neighbors as well so we often run over with mm-hmm. coffee samples and uh, help each other out if we can um similarities and differences well 
Uh, both have very good coffee. Um, I would say that Drop might have another attitude towards the coffee mm-hmm. uh, than Joanna Nystrom, but at the same time, very, very similar. Mm-hmm. Uh, who, who both own- amazing places to work at. Yeah, who owns and, and, and runs uh, Johanna Nystrom? Uh, right now, it's uh, a guy called uh, Johan Morian. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's the CEO. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he he runs everything. He's a Swede. Yeah, he okay. is. So he's a uh, and I noticed uh, and I should mention uh, I am currently in Gothenburg where uh, my wife is from, and I do spend part of the year here. Although I had the pleasure of spending a week in Stockholm recently, and I'll probably go back there in in August. That um, uh, uh, the um, J- Johanna Nistrom opened, I think, three locations here in in uh, Gothenburg and Gothenburg. Uh, there is not a drop coffee. Hopefully, it will be here someday. And uh, you also have Damateo, which is a uh, a, uh, a major coffee producer uh, and a very high quality specialty coffee place uh, in uh, Gothenburg, along with many, many, many other really top notch cafes. As a matter of fact, if you go to my website, the, thecoffeeleague.com, and you go to uh, International Coffee, you click on Sweden, Stockholm, Gothenburg, I list uh, some of my favorite places. And then I'll be changing that because I've been introduced to some other great places uh, yeah, 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 there as well. Oh, okay, so uh, Vincent, you, you uh, finished third in the uh, uh, Swedish barista competition, and that's a, a tremendous accomplishment. For those people not familiar with these competitions, a lot of folks go in, and I've watched them. It's nerve-wracking <laughs> to watch. They're, you're under a yeah. lot of pressure. You have to do a lot. You have to say a lot in a short period of time. Uh, what uh, motivated you to go into the competitions and what was, what was your experience in the competition like? Uh, well, it, it was my first competition, uh, so I was both very curious and very nervous about it. Um, I wanted to, like, I've, I've always been watching these videos on YouTube uh, from competition and seeing mm-hmm. those routines and just got, I, I, I want to do that. I want to feel that feeling that I can see uh, mm-hmm. and the guys performing uh, on that screen. Uh, so that got me curious. And also I wanted to to learn a lot about one particular coffee and try out different recipes and how can I extract this flavor and how can I combine that with milk, for example, or what am I going to do for my signature beverage? So mm-hmm. a, a lot of different factors played in there. What was the, What was your signature beverage, by the way? Uh, it was actually uh, the espresso. It was a uh, washed uh, Ethiopian heirloom, uh, super good. Mm-hmm. Um, it was that espresso infused with Sichuan pepper, uh, and then I added some. Um, uh, it's called jasmine, yeah, jasmine tea syrup to that. Wow! So it was a really sweet and very herbal drink. Right, and I should mention again for listeners that aren't familiar uh, with Greece, the competitions and what a signature drink is. That's a unique drink that the barista that's in competition uh, 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 puts together. There's probably certain guidelines on what you can and cannot use. Uh, and uh, I've seen all sorts of stuff presented, but it, it brings out the barista's creativity and, and skill. And also, uh, explain to our listeners, while you're doing all this, you're actually speaking to the judges, right? And letting them yeah. know you have a deep knowledge of, of coffee. Yeah. Uh, you have to show... First off, you have to tell the story almost. Uh, mm-hmm. You have to always ask yourself when you're preparing for the competition, why am I doing this and why am I saying this? Mm-hmm. So somewhere you need to have a bottom line that just defines the whole routine and all the drinks. Uh, and then you overall need a lot of knowledge about that particular coffee. Uh, you need to show on professionalism. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. No, we all know it, a lot of stuff. It, uh, that, that's fantastic. Were you nervous? I was super nervous. The uh-huh. barista shakes were brutal. <laughs> uh, uh-huh. But yeah, you'll go. Well, I'm, I'm going to guess you're going to go back into competition next year. Is that right? I, I hope so. Yeah. Right. It and, would be and, really yeah. funny. I should say that we've also have St- Stephen Maloney on, who's a former uh, Swedish barista champion, and I'm going to have an interview scheduled. Also, I think his name is Matthew Winton, who was the champion this year, but. Anybody who yeah. finishes in the finals and all, they're all, yeah, these guys are uh, absolutely, and gals, uh, 
uh, are, are absolute top-notch uh, coffee people. And uh, I met a, another com competitor, uh, uh, I believe this year was uh, a woman named Fatima. She's with uh, yeah. uh, Pascal Coffee in, uh, in, 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 also in Stockholm. She uh, was one of the competitors who I hope to be interviewing also. And then there was somebody with, and I'm going to pronounce everything incorrectly, Gost. Uh, is it Gost Coffee uh, also in Stockholm uh, that uh, was uh, a, a competitor? Uh, so, uh, yeah, you, you, you have a lot of competition there, which only means your skills will continue to get better and better. And, and you mentioned this before, but I want to ask you again. There's, there's this, these competitions, but I find that in the coffee world, and every city, the coffee culture is a little different. But uh, there seems to also be a lot of uh, support for one another. It, when, let's talk about Stockholm. In Stockholm, what is the coffee culture and community amongst baristas and roasters and people in the industry like? Uh, I would say it's, it's a really good one, and it's definitely getting better. Uh, recently, three guys started a community like meetup point, uh, uh -huh. you could call it. They arrange like cuppings and latte art throwdowns, mm -hmm. stuff like that, and really it brings us all together. Uh, but yeah, it is a, a small but very good community yeah. of baristas. And, and very uh, supportive. Have, mm -hmm. Yeah, very supportive. Uh, at the competition, I remember we borrowed stuff from one another, uh, helped each other out with polishing glasses or what some yeah so super supportive and very helpful nice community right that's wonderful here because i have the great pleasure in the last couple of last year anyway of traveling all over the states or over much of europe uh visiting uh, uh cities and uh meeting with some of the top uh, uh people in the coffee industry and and uh it, it's a it, it's really its own culture its own community it's different from place to place but I found it to be very collaborative, very supportive, uh, uh, caring community. And I, and for those people, listeners that don't know me well, uh, you know, I also do radio, and I've done a lot of. Po I've interviewed almost all the major U.S. political uh, people. And one of the reasons I'm spending a lot of time in coffee now is politics tends to divide people, and there's a lot of divisiveness and 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 uh, uh, tension and animosity between people in that. Uh, industry of government, uh, at least in the States, and I'm sure it's like that in Europe as well, to a certain degree. But in coffee, coffee brings people together. Co coffee uh, uh, gets people working together. Uh, uh, often cafes become, uh, you know, focal points for community. And I, I, and I want to uh, explain to our listeners, you're in Stockholm, and you're working for uh, Nistr uh, Johanna Nistrom, and also for Drop Coffee, you're just a few steps from either other right there. And both places always are <laughs> fairly packed. And, and I'm sure you have other locations as well. But that, what, what is that area of, uh, of, uh, of Stockholm that I was in, where I came into your cafe, into ne Johanna Nistrom anyway, and, and right down the block from Draft Coffee? Tell us about that area of Stockholm. Because I think if people come to Stockholm, this is so should be a place they should go to both cafes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they definitely show both very good cafes and also uh, Södermalm, the, where, where they're both located, it's a very nice uh, area to be in. So that's south of the old city. And, and for, uh, for yes. yeah, I have a lot of listeners from all over the world, but for my listeners, especially my fellow Americans, I, I'm, a, I'm American, uh, you know, if you haven't been to Scandinavia, come to Scandinavia, you haven't been to Sweden, come to Sweden. The dollar is super strong now. It's the easiest place for an American to be because everybody's, I mean, everybody speaks English, uh, super friendly. Uh, and if you have any interest in coffee, and I'm going to guess most people that listen to the Coffee League have an interest <laughs> in coffee, you, you, you can't do better than this. It's really just an amazing place. I've been, I've been all over uh, 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 Denmark. I've been all over Norway, all over Sweden. Uh, I'll be going to Finland and uh, uh, just uh, tremendous coffee culture. Uh, virtually every day I, I hit a new place and uh, try to get back to some of the, the places I've been that I enjoy. Uh, just wonderful like that. So where, where do you go from here? Uh, what, where, where do you see your future in coffee? Would you like to stay in the coffee industry? Would you like to own a cafe sometime? Uh, what, what are some of the dreams you have 
in regard to uh, your future in coffee? Uh, well, since I'm still very young, I'm only 17. Uh, wow, I, I didn't know that. You are my youngest <laughs> guest. Oh, I, I thought you were, uh, you're 17 and you finished third in the uh, Swedish Reason competition. I would say you have quite yes. a future. I had no idea. My youngest guest, guest ever. Congratulations. What, what, what is it? Are, I assume you're still in school or you're in gymnasium? Uh, yeah, uh, you know, some high school or yeah, and Let me explain. In Sweden, you go to high school until you're 16, then you go to gymnasium. Nothing to do with what we oh, think yeah. of a gymnasium in the U.S., but it's between high school and college. Matter of fact, most people will just do uh, two, three years of gymnasium and be fully educated and move on to their careers. But So what, what's your plan for your career? Um, I would love to run a coffee shop. Uh, I think that would be a really... Fun challenge, a really mm -hmm. good challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, yeah, somewhere along down the line, I hope I will get the opportunity to run a coffee shop. I, I'm I'm going to guess that you will. And what would, <laughs> what are the elements that you would want uh, uh, to be uh, your, in, in your coffee shop? Of because you've worked in coffee, you've worked for some of the best, two of the best places in the world, uh, two of the best cafes. What would your uh, Give us some vision of what your place would be like. Um, my place, I've, I want it to be very welcoming, uh, very educating, because here in Sweden, it's still a lot of people that comes back with their mm -hmm. super good Kenyan coffee and be like, this is way too watery. Mm -hmm. So I would want that space to be very educational mm -hmm. uh, and very open to everyone to learn uh, and to experience new things inside the coffee industry. Um, so yeah, so something among those lines. Great. Well, I I look forward to uh, being a customer in, in your cafe. <laughs> Very I well want done. you to uh, keep up the good work, and uh, hopefully next year we'll have you back on the show. And uh, I have hopefully. a feeling if you finish third this year, you may win it next year. You'll certainly uh, <laughs> continue move up the ladder, and uh, and then there's uh, uh, you know there's um, a variety of competitions. There's a Another organization now, I'm the coffee league.com, is also the Barista League that uh, was started by uh, uh, Steve Maloney, a former Swedish barista champion, and they have their competitions. They're doing a U.S. tour now. So I think there's lots of different avenues uh, to go down for people in coffee and uh, to keep on enjoying it. Well, thank you so very much uh, for taking the time to, to speak with us today. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you for uh, uh, We look forward to having you on again, and good luck with everything. <laughs> Take care. You too. Bye. Thank you.